Duval, what's going on? It's your boy Ruben, and uh, you know what it is. New week, new video. We are in the house, bringing it home with the dub against the Patriots, splitting the games of in London this year, um, one and one, which is a damn shame because that Bears game was completely winnable, um, and we had a shot to go 3-0 there. Going, uh, Coming home with a 2-5 and five record is, is pretty disheartening, especially because now we're playing the Green Bay Packers. In the next few games, the intensity ratchets ratchets up because we are um, playing some pretty good teams coming in, right? So next up is the Green Bay Packers. Uh, we took care of business against the Patriots, even though it didn't look good at early on, right? But the next, look at the next four games. And this is before we get to the Texas game, which happens to be the fifth game. Next four games is Packers, Eagles, Vikings, Lions, and then it's the Texans, right? But the reason I stop at the Lions is because I, I I believe we can beat the Texans. Like, these are tougher games. But, like, these next four games, these are cream of the crop teams. Eagles, Vikings, Packers, who just beat the Texans. Lions, who look like world beaters right now. Um, those are going to be tough games. Now, I wanted to be 3-0 and coming into the Packers game because I think that momentum would have uh, been huge going against Green Bay. Because while they're very good, I don't think they're unbeatable. And they have to come to us. And uh, I think we we have some things that, you know, we can do to kind of steal that game. And then once you're 4-0, I think anything can happen going into that Philly game. Now, damn shame we lost that primetime game against Philly. And while, you know, it sucks, I hate it for us. Um, I can't say we didn't deserve to be flexed out. Okay, especially when you consider... Um, how embarrassing we looked against the Bills on Monday night. Um, it, it's just a damn shame because I feel like we worked really hard to get some of these primetime games and actually put a talented roster together enough that the NFL would consider us entertaining enough to be on primetime. And it sucks that we are not chosen to do so um, as a result of the way we're falling apart. Now, reasons I think we're falling apart, I, I really think it's, when people say like, "Oh, that's a good, that's a good, um, that's a good roster," but they're not a great team, that's sort of what I feel like about us, right? So I don't feel we're together. We do we're doing losing shit despite our roster, and by losing shit, like you can just tell a team when they have a losing culture, um, because they do things that lose them the game. They they don't get that fourth down. They don't make the right call at the right time. They, uh, they, you know, let me give you an example, right? We fumble at the goal line in Miami, right? Now, you could write that off as, as a fluke, and that's one thing, right? But we didn't rebound from that. We went, we had a, we had a game against the Browns who aren't good, right? Now, they have great players, but they're not a team in themselves, considering everything that was going on with Deshaun Watson, that, tank, that game was there to be had, and we lost it. Then we followed that up with the bludgeoning of us against the Bills, right? And so now it's like, okay, now it's just the aura of losing, right? And then the Texans game, we try to pull ourselves out of it, and, tech, and, and um, Trevor misses two bombs, um, and, and, and we don't get a first key first down at the end of the game. We give the ball to C.J. Stroud, and you feel, here we go again. Those are cultural issues. Those are things that as a coaching staff, you should be trying your damnedest to shake. Um, we rebounded against the Colts, and we didn't carry that winning into the Bears game. And it, and you, there was a lot of here we go again in the Bears game. It's, it's like we're not doing the things we need to do to be resilient. We're not doing um, – and what ends up happening when you're losing like this, right, or you lose players like Tyson Campbell, Poirier, and Lewican, it's the other players, instead of – Doing their job, they try to over overcompensate, and we try to overcompensate, right? So that you, you try to make a a big play, and next thing you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and you're leaving a hole wide open, right? Look at Devin Lloyd when he missed that touchdown to Cole Komet, right? Now a lot of guys are clowning him for it, but if you would if you remember, there was. A receiver going this way, a running back going this way. They faked it to the left. They faked it to the right. And then Cole Komet snuck out. Now, that's a tough play to cover. But if Devin Lloyd was disciplined and not trying to make a play, he's probably in that zone because Cole Komet was probably his guy. Um, or if he was in zone, he probably just decided to go after where he thought the ball was going 
because nobody was in his zone for him to, you know, just stay there. So he's probably tried to make a play. Next thing you know, now it's on Cisco to try to make that tackle. And that's a 6'5", tight end, 250 pounds. Probably has 50 pounds on Cisco uh, running full speed at him. That's a tough tackle to make. Touchdown. We lose that game. Um, notes from the Patriots game. Um, wow, I loved it, right? So we finally, once we finally found our footing, we ran it down their throats and we just kept doing it. That's good stuff. That's winning mentality. That's um, allowing your team to get in there and beat teams up. That, I think, resonates with players, right? And then letting the defense do what they do. Now, the defense, I'm still, you know, while Tyson Campbell, I think, shored a lot of things up in terms of helping, you know, have a legit number one to put on number one receivers, and by default, it slots everybody down a peg, right? So now Ronald Darby's not guarding number ones, which makes him better, um, even though he hasn't been great, uh, which means Jerry and Jones is covering the slot, which makes him better. And Buster Brown's also helping out in the middle of the field, which makes him better. Um, those are key things. Now, the culture stuff, you know, it's really from the head up. You know, it's it's Doug Peterson Trent Baalke, and I've discussed their issues, and there's, there's a real rip there, right? You can tell because where's Mason Smith? Inactive again, right? Why is he not getting those minutes? Um, Eric Armstead, he's been a waste of money so far. I really thought we were going to get, you know, I didn't think it was going to be Calais, but I thought we were going to get a similar player, and, and I really felt like, a lot of you guys were saying we don't have enough pass rush, even though we have Josh Hines Allen and Trayvon Walker. Um, and you might be right, right? But I think that we don't necessarily need a third defensive end. We need more interior push. That's why I was high on Mason Smith. I was high on Eric Armstead. And I think that if we got more interior push, that it would help out the edge players. I like Abdullah, but... Without interior push, it's easy for quarterbacks to move, step up in the pocket and do what they got to do. Now, the biggest key thing, this was the first game that I, that, you know, I'm not the emotional fan that a lot of you guys are, and that's not to knock you guys, but I, I see how every game we, you know, switch up on people. I'm, I liked Ryan Nielsen. I haven't given up on Ryan Nielsen as a DC, um, and I, I thought he got a bit of a raw deal with just the talent situation, right? In terms of, you know, us not providing him the adequate amount of debt in certain situations, like when we lost Tyson Campbell, that's that's a tough spot to be in for a defensive coordinator. And you have all these young guys you're trying to develop. This was the first game I was disappointed in him. And it's because of two things. I don't love the way we just – keep platoon swapping guys in and out on the defense i don't like it it doesn't allow for consistency um it allows for you know um the offense to identify weak links that you've brought in because some of these guys are nobodies you know some some of these coaches if you ever play football they fall in love with certain guys um even though they're not that talented but in practice they just they just do the right things they fall in love with those guys and they want to give them a shot instead of putting the more talented player out there and it gets frustrating right because at the end of the day they practice great but at the end of the day on game day they're not doing the things they need to be doing and it's costing you there could be some of that um and the other biggest thing is you know even if you're going to platoon swap the way he does which i think is just weird i i, I can't tell you a time I've seen coaches swap guys as much as he does and as frequently as he does. Um, the, my biggest complaint is we play too much, man. I, I was very happy that we were going to go to a 4-3. Um, I saw what he did with the Saints. I saw what he did with the Falcons. And I'm all for press, man. I, I'm not a fan of Mike Caldwell's defense, even though a lot of you guys were. Uh, I think some of you guys don't with all due respect, understand what you were looking at. So I think last year's defense, we were very opportunistic and we were very good pass rush wise. And that's because, you know, Mike Caldwell has, you know, with that three, four has very sexy blitz schemes, right? And they work when you're doing them all the time, you're going to get plenty of sacks. The problem with that is, is we were bleeding yards. Don't take my word for it. We were like bottom 10 in passing yards allowed, right? But the trade-off is we got plenty of sacks. We created turnovers. 
The problem with that is, is you can't rely on that year in and year out. You can't pencil that in that, okay, well, my defense is going to do this year in and year out. And I can tell you if I'm a coach or Doug Peterson, that's probably raking his nerves, right? So I'm scoring a bunch of points, but on this week, you're allowing all these unnecessary yards and points. And now we have to put these points up, right? I would prefer a more steady defense. Now, Ryan Nielsen, when we changed to the 4-3, I thought that's what we were getting. But we're playing so much, man. And in man, in situations that I don't even I don't even think makes sense, right? So there was a third and 15 I think we gave up in this game at later in the end of the game. I don't remember if anything became of it. I, I don't know if it was around the time they got, you know, the 10 or whatever. But it might have been later in the game. It was like third and 15, and we're playing man, and they, they converted. But it's because... The, we were manned up. I, I didn't get it. Like, manned up across the board, okay? And the reason I didn't get it is because when it's third and 15, play zone, you're playing the sticks. You should play the sticks, and it should just be that. And then just come up and make the tackle. You're getting off the field or allowing the field goal. I forgot where we were on the field. We played man, and we allowed the first down. And it's because in, in man, if you get beat, you know, if that guy beats his man, there's nobody to recover and stop that first down from happening. I don't understand why we're playing so much man, right? Mix it up. You need to be multiple. Um, I don't mind playing nickel. I don't mind playing big nickel. Or if you're going to do man, have some zone concepts. I really feel like Cisco um, and Savage are our best safety tandem. We'll see what happens with Tishon Gibson whenever that ball drops. But um, Cisco's having a down year, but he's not a man safety. And we have him playing man a lot. Uh, also with Savage, we have him playing the nickel. I never understood it. I was like, okay, well, let's see it because he's super athletic, right at 4-3. But I'd rather these guys drop in deep zones and let the guy, if you're going to play man, let those guys drop deep zones and be ball hawks, right? Or play some robber, right? And be ball hawks and let everybody else play man or some kind of mixture of zone, man. There's too much man across the board, and we're not good enough to match up with everybody across the board. And even if you were, conceptually, you're allowing, you're, you're, you're allowing your defense to be in a situation where if one guy gets beat, it's going to, they're gaining too many yards. So I don't want to harp too much on it. You know, if, if you don't believe me, play man and play a whole lot of man, right, and see what happens. To include your safeties, play man. Play man across the board. See how hard it is to stop a professional NFL offense on Madden. And then think about it in the NFL. That's all I'm saying. At least play a mixture of man zone. You know, be multiple. Like, don't be so predictable. Um, and then we'll go from there. But, uh, you know, just some quick, you know, thoughts. We'll see what happens. This next stretch is a gauntlet. Um, hopefully they've exercised some demons, okay? I, I like the way we're running the ball. Um, although I will say, I wish they'd allow Tank to really carry the load. I know he carried the ball a lot, but it's because game, stri game script allowed it to happen. He ended up with 26 carries, but you got to remember, on, we ran the ball like 18 straight times. If we're in a closer game, he's probably not at 26 carries. And I like the Ernest Johnson, but he shouldn't be getting the amount of carries he was getting over Tank, Tank Bigsby, excuse me. So just some food for thought. That's something that if they don't identify that Tank Bigsby is that deal, like identify their best players and then really go to them when you need to, it could be problematic down the line. That's all I got to say. Um, Travis Etienne, guys, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't see him being on this team, so I don't see how he probably even makes it beyond the trade deadline. I, you know, I know a lot of you guys love him. Um, I, I've never loved him. I like him, but I've never looked at him like he was a, a running back. I always thought he was kind of a gadget guy, useful in, um, you know, certain situations, third down. Um, you know, they should use him, you know, at receiver more, things like that. But Tank Bigsby's a running back. And, you, and I think those guys are really underrated. You know, you need to get two, three, four tough yards. Here and there. I think vision wise, Bank Big Speed is just better. He's gonna always keep you ahead of the chains. We lost plenty of yards with ETN, and we also become predictable with ETN because we run a lot of pitch outside zone stuff instead of up the gut. And then even when we do run it up the gut, he's getting blown up often. He's not falling forward. So um 
we'll see how this goes and i hope this starts to run let me know what y'all think guys all right peace out remember to like subscribe and share thanks